so far since I've come out been a safe place. Alex Harris says he helped organize this protest a few months ago to stand up for trans kids who don't have the same support he had. He's pleased with the new report from New Brunswick's child and youth advocate. He had to say the same things as I've had to say most of the time, that it's just, it's not fair to kids to expect parental permission just to use the correct pronouns for them. The advocate says the public is divided, but his view is that New Brunswick's policy violates the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and the Provincial Human Rights Act. Frankly, there's no sign anybody before passing this thing did the basic test of going, let's check other statutes and see if we broke the law. Because it does break the law. I haven't read the report. Maybe there's something there that, that is, uh, will, will help us move along. But, um, but my belief in the, in the role of parents is, is certainly uh, as it has always been. Now widely known as Policy 713, it was introduced three years ago to help provide an inclusive environment for LGBTQ students. Preferred pronouns were to be respected. But in June, the government made changes, making it mandatory for teachers to deny a request to change pronouns without a parent's consent. The goal, they said, was to protect parental rights. Discrimination by oversight, however, is still discrimination. Lamrock recommends staff go back to respecting all students' pronouns if they're in grade 6 or higher. For younger children, he says it should be up to the principal to decide if the child has the capacity to make that decision. The recommendations are not binding. I'm terrified for September because that's going to be that's going to be when we really see the effects of this. He says the new report strikes a fair balance and he's calling on the provincial government to give it serious consideration. Kayla Hounsel, CBC News, Halifax.